This is the kid. Too bad. Not too bad at all. Not too bad for a, a, a wet summer. <laughs> a wet summer in the UK. <laughs> all right. Are you in the UK? Are, are you busy yeah, in the UK? Yeah. It's, it's the mid-summer, the height of summer. Yeah. I am, yeah. What? It's, it's the height of all summer right. and it's uh, uh, 14 degrees. All right. So how did uh, I? Are you the one I was talking to? Hello. Uh, I think we, we we tried to catch up a bit yesterday. Uh, normally, normally it's Wellington. I normally speak to. Okay. But uh, it's just sent me the link to get a bit of a contact with you. Yeah. All right. So what do you think of the initiative that uh, Wellington is talking about? I think uh, networks uh, have got a power of the, unto themselves that um, is beyond anything else you can do. Um, and I think what Wellington is trying to do, like in terms of bringing people quite close together uh, and sharing ideas and allowing um, allowing the birth of new 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 thoughts to 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 emerge, can only be a good thing. Uh, and the fact that it's, it's a free it's a free space. That's that's to me is a winning combination. Uh, today, you know what we are talking about. We are talking about identity, identity politics, in terms and, of uh, citizenship. Just the identity. Who am I? When I say I am a journalist, what is a journalist? As a question. When I say I'm a doctor, ah yes, uh, coming back. Yeah, uh, it's. I think identity is one of those words that can easily be misused depending on the purpose of of the user. Um, as as you see, people can take on various different personas or identities depending on the circumstances and um, how it helps or hinders their message or other people's message so for example um you, you can easily um you can easily move quite quite seamlessly between being a journalist and an activist depending on the person's perspective of the, of the message you're delivering um but when, when somebody when you talk to other think, people and say i'm a journalist what do you think this term means to you what is a journalist to you? In my view, a journalist, a journalist is is it's um uh is a professional person whose job is resident also really is to gather information and deliver it to the generality to the general public. Um, they without fear or favor, they basically they tell it like it is. So, um. A journalist for me will be somebody. The obvious person I can think of is uh, the, the man of the moment at the moment. Opwell is clearly a journalist to start with, but depending on what he's saying, you can quite easily uh, pigeonhole him as an activist. Depending on how you how you like or dislike uh, what what they're broadcasting. Uh, we we have this thing in the UK at the moment where um, you can go on uh, the BBC. They have journalists. Uh, but also there's another channel called RT, which is a Russian-sponsored, well, a Russian yeah. TV channel, basically. Um, and sometimes, depending on what they're saying, that can be conflated as propaganda. All right. Uh, and it's an joined, interesting dynamic. Yeah, we are joined by Innocent Netanyahu. Good morning. Good morning, Say. How are you? How are you? How are you? And uh, we are yeah. also joined by Wellington. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mawere. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, Keith, to the C2C community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wellington. Thank you for the invite. Much, much appreciated. And hello, everybody. Very lovely to meet you. Okay. And welcome to Natasha. She's the only lady. She's 20% she's 20 of the group. 
morning, so, good morning, everyone. <laughs> good morning. So let's, uh, Innocent, you read the thread uh, this morning. What is your yes, what yes, is, I did. What, what is your take? Uh, I realized that you were sincerely asking questions, but I wasn't satisfied with the kind of responses that uh, came from forgetting the name was was what the, the first guy that you were talking about. He wasn't sincere in his responses. But what I actually discovered was that he vindicated the allegations that the state uh, have making on, on, on Hopel Chingono, because uh, towards the end, he, he was now admitting that, um, no, the Zimbabwe situation, you will not have to stick to the profession of journalism. You must also remember that I, I'm a citizen, I've got rights, I can use any means necessary to effect change. But you were actually e emphasizing the point of sticking to the profession of journalism. Shall I be a journalist or I should also enjoy other rights of being a citizen? That is what I thought you were actually trying to put across to him. But the guys ended up actually vindicating the state in that they said, as a citizen, I cannot be in the straight jacket of journalism. I can also enjoy my other rights. So I saw that as double dipping. So that's a challenge there. So do you agree that uh, some, sometimes we are not honest with each other? This is a veteran journalist with more than 20 years experience. But he can't tell you what is the promise of journalism or what is a journalist. Because it doesn't yeah. mean when I'm a doctor, I cease to be a human being. I can do other things. But when I say I'm a doctor and you come to me, you must expect something from a doctor. Yeah, you know, every profession has got its guidelines. I think there are ethics in journalism. It's just like uh, I, can, I can refer you to the lawyers of the opposition MDC. They have political rights and they are members of the opposition. But you find that when a ZANU-PF official is alleged to have become corrupt or something, they will be represented by a lawyer from the MDC and they will say, it's a profession, so I can represent uh, anyone from any party who is alleged to be corrupt. So it should be the same when it comes to journalism. You don't have now to break your ethics and say, uh, I, because I've got political interests, so I should uh, not respect the, the rules of the court or something. So it becomes a challenge. Imagine... Uh, a, a, a brother from the MDC says, I'm going to nail my client because I think he's corrupt. No, you don't do that. You become very professional. And if the person from ZANU-PF gets a bail, it is your victory. We believe that you have done that professionally as a lawyer. So there is a challenge here in that most of the journalists, they violate the ethics of journalism. They are not honest. They use journalism as a front to advance their political motives. The moment you do that, the state will also take you head on on your political uh, motives. Then you, we begin to cry foul and say, uh, so I think that's being unfair. But I think we should stick to the ethics of journalism. Uh, you are in the other group. Uh, what is the name of the other group that uh, I invited you some... It's now some months ago. Is, is, is it uh, uh, this one that you were trying to impart that uh, uh, ethics of journalism? Isn't it towards the, media excellence? Towards I think that's, excellence. that's the, the group. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you look back since you joined the group, do you see people talking about this issue or using the case of Hopewell as a case study 
uh, 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 or just uh, another group where uh, the same uh, rubbish is circulated. Oh, when when it was created that group, I remember when you were posting the threads. And I was sort of provoked by the kind of quality dialogue that was ongoing there. But the moment everyone got in, it was hijacked. It was turned into a battlefield. The general polarization, Zaru PF against them, DCM, DC against the Zaru PF, and all this toxic politics. So there is nothing that now represents uh, the, the reason why that group was created. If we are to right now actually begin to sort of reset the, the, this, the, 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 the settings of that group, you, you will find that people will deliberately ignore those things. No one wants to do things that are ethical. People just want to rally behind uh, the viewpoint that they think they have to, to, to defend. All right. So if uh, we take it, uh, you as a case study, uh, how many journalists do you think are in that group? Oh, there are many. Uh, actually, some of their numbers, I, I, I've saved them. So there are many. There are many. I would say maybe around 65. So. Yeah. So right and now... And some credible, the, some credible the, journalists. Yeah, the group is 227. It is uh, 227. People. Yeah. So if I'm and, to and count uh, the freelance journalists. Yeah. So if but there you, are many. If, there are many because some that I no, know personally. I'm not saying there are many, but they are missing in action. They are not proud of their profession. They don't even stand forward and say. Yeah, no, maybe, no. maybe it's to do. This is wrong. If I'm a journalist, may, let may. me stay on the lane of journalism. Let me showcase what I do. They will be showcasing their stories, their videos. Yeah. yeah, that is what we expect. But maybe I don't know. Maybe it's to do with uh, organizational, what, what do you call them? Editorial policies, no, not, organizational you know, rules. They, Maybe they're not allowed they, to talk certain issues. No, don't explain that on behalf of others. So it was just that. Uh, uh, don't explain. Okay. If you don't know, then just uh, observe. So, Wellington, do you discover yeah. that those who claim to be journalists are the very ones who are taking <coughs> side, cheerleading? What is not ethical for journalism? Yeah. Uh, uh, for starters, what I what I observe is that journalists have gone into some kind of a shell. We don't see them uh, uh, being vocal because maybe they are being gagged by editorial policies, or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but uh, what is actually happening is that. Uh, Social media is, is going to the forefront without journalism. So the risk now with social media is that is uh, citizen journalists go online and speak their minds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Ethics of the talk of the profession have gone to the door. Uh, would would you Sum look up. up to personally as a journalist, exemplary journalist? Wokotungono uh, is the first name that comes to mind. In Zimbabwe and in South Africa, uh, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, South Africa well. comes to mind. All right, uh, that's him. And Keith, hmm. who do you look up to? Yeah. Oh, well. uh, Keith, uh, who do you look uh, up you to? You know, we, we, we seem to be talking about personally for me, it's Hopewell. Um, the reason why I'm thinking okay. when people talk about ethics, it's such a broad <laughs> tent when you talk about ethics of journalism. Um, uh, you don't have to explain. That's uh, that's what you look up to. And uh, Godfrey uh, in yeah. Mozambique, uh, you look up to. Uh, Godfrey, can you hear? 
Uh, uh, Godfrey is on mood. Might, might need to type. Hello? No, he's, he, he has muted himself out of mm. talking. And Natasha, do you have anyone you look up to? You want to be a journalist and who do you look up to train you to do the best in the craft? Well, um, I don't have a specific, but uh, I, you know, I'm going to be kind of a cliche -ish, but I look up to you, Motumwa, because, you know, you have, as I've said a million times on the show before, is that you've really inspired me over the years of knowing you. So I look up to you, even though you're not a journalist, but um, your knowledge is always valuable to me. So Motumwa is my mentor looking up to when it comes to not not <laughs> If you're talking about storytelling, Mm. Yesterday you had Rajen. Mm. And what was the feeling of Rajen after the show? You know, it was it was great. You know, um, I think we've reached a lot of people. And you know, I feel so inspired today actually after the show, you know, because the the response I got back and the response he got back from he obviously he shared um the link and he shared the, the article I wrote and you know, the response we got back, it was so empowering because now I just can't wait to keep on writing. You know, I'm not a journalist myself, yeah, but, but you, um, are, you know, you after are, the response I got from them. You are a good writer. Don't underestimate yourself. A good writer is like a dog that barks without expecting mm -hmm. to be congratulated for barking. How many people write with expectation of somebody saying you you wrote very well? Mm. Imagine you just took it upon yourself to say, if there's no one I look up to, then let me be the person others look up to without me asking them. Mm. If somebody is not objective, you become objective. It's like innocent in the group that we set up. He distinguishes himself by he by doing. He is contesting ideas every day, but he's not shying away from taking the next step to be the idea that he is in his mind. Mm. So they are there. There are people who are there who are the media. They inbox you. They say, what, what, what do you think about this? I said, but we set up a group to celebrate the best. Why are you not picking the ideas there to see what is the problem with Zimbabwe? Mm. Because Zimbabwe is the six of us right now. Uh, you are forced, Natasha, to talk about Zimbabwe. But imagine I took the same story you did yesterday and put yourself in Rajen's mind that I came to a show with no expectation. Mm. I came out of a show with a new sense of responsibility that I have to play my part mm. with others. I have to reach others through others. I need to be part of this community where Keith is in the UK, Wellington is in Zimbabwe, uh, Godfrey is in Mozambique, you are in Deben, and we are here. And what brings us together is this idea that we can raise the standards so that those who are not good journalists feel discouraged from writing a story and blaming the editor mm. for the bad stories that I'm being told not to balance the story. Who would be a journalist who would tell you that don't talk to the other side, that a coin has two sides, that there is a side that you can call government. There is a side that you can call the rest of us who are not in government, not opposition. It's our government. Those in government and outside government, they are all part of the same family. Mm. But if I write a story that would divide somebody in government from somebody outside it, what am I creating? 
Oh, you're creating havoc. You know, it's it's once again writing a story from one side. Like yesterday I said on the show is that, you know, a story has two sides, but a story has a million opinions. And, um, yeah, so if you had to write one side, you're going to cause havoc. And that's what makes a journal. you know, a good journalist is someone who looks at the story from both sides and then gives his opinion on both sides of the story. So I take uh, uh, fuel and I take the match. And I light it myself. Then I blame the fire. No, that's not the fire's fault. It's your fault. Because you took the match, you put the fuel, you lit the fire. But sometimes, don't you feel some of our journalists are actually not firefighters? They are not there to bridge people with information. That way, as this one said, this, that Hopewell is a terrorist. The other says, Wopo is a professional who is frustrated by the issues that take place around him. Mm. And when, when does the journalist become an activist? When does he become a professional? Because the people who are saying you're unprofessional, they also are, are unprofessional as government actors. You know, they are unprofessional because, you know, those are the people who hide behind walls and they are too afraid to give their opinion. This is why I believe is if you don't stand up and try and make a change, you do not have it up. You do not have the right to complain about people who are making the change out there. You don't, ha you don't have the right to lift your opinion if you are not moving forward for something. Um, and, you know, um, once again, it's it's... We are bounded by, you know, rules in the world. You know, journalists are allowed to say A, B, and C, which is governed by the government. The government says to journalists what you're allowed to say. Look at other countries. Journalists just disappear. They literally, if they're like China, the ones when they when COVID just came out, you know, the doctor who said that COVID has been there for a long time, all of a sudden disappeared because the government didn't want that news to come out. You know, it's but like as if the world's controlled. But do you think, uh, uh, Mr. Luxon, that government is a person that can stop you. Who is government in the quest of our identity? Uh, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Mawere. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah. uh, government is uh, us, the people. But Natasha is saying government uh, made someone evaporate in China. Oh, yeah. he, he had upset so many human beings in government who were intolerant that how can you not see the world the way I see it? If I say there's no COVID, there's no COVID, just understand that. If I say there's no corruption, just understand there's no corruption. Why do you have to write about a non event? If I say those people are corrupt, point your fingers at them. Write about those people, not about me. So then. Hello. Then it yeah. becomes um, you know, those people who don't buy other people's ideas. So when we have people in the community who cannot buy something from someone, those be becomes a, a problem. All right. And innocent, are you are you seeing the bigger picture that uh, uh, when it's dark at midnight? and you have no one to look up to, are we not all black people at midnight? <laughs> That's a difficult one. But we, yeah, we might be all black people, but to some that darkness might not be a challenge to them. You know, darkness doesn't so overcome the light. So how, Innocent, how do you write a story at midnight when it's dark? and call someone white, someone a charlatan, someone a, a, a spy, an agent of foreigners. When it's dark, there are no shining lights. Uh, it, it, it depends because labeling people is all to do with what kind of perceptions you are having. Uh, personally, I believe that race is an invention, but we will be talking about the systems. I don't believe the, the, you, you, in this thing called racism. 
there are good white people, there are bad black people. So it's all about the characters that we should talk about. So when it's dark, sometimes that darkness doesn't affect anything because some creatures, to them, darkness is the normal environment that they are living in. There's a, there are nocturnal animals. I think you are aware of that. So some people might not even shine yeah, when I'm there is light. A, they, they shine when there is dark. A journalist can see things in the dark. Keith, have you ever seen that? A guy then says there are ten percent white people, but he, he can't see as well. No, this this is it. Like you say, you're using darkness as a as a metaphor for uh, when there is no there is no there's a desert of information, uh, and the few people who can who can get information. Uh, are professionals, well-trained individuals who can, to some extent, decipher fact from fiction um, by putting one and two things together. But it's alchemy, isn't it? So some people can take the very same facts and create a completely different picture. Um, with, with the hope to, that, to, that uh, create... somebody can use the, can use the darkness to create divisions. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Hundred percent. And and those are the dark arts that we we hear people talk about. Uh, um, is it deliberate that uh, the in Zimbabwe there is there isn't there's a lack of plur, plurality uh, in terms of a news outlets? Imagine I would write a story about Trump, and I'm a Democrat. It's, you're gonna it's, you're gonna, you're gonna it's, color it a certain uh, way. It's very difficult. To to start the story, yes, but as well as the, 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 Wellington, you have been in this city. Sorry, to see. Just, okay, go ahead. So, I was, what I, one thing I was going to add is that um, when 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 we 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 have this habit that I keep seeing of something that's a phenomenon called false equivalence. Um, for example, um, anything a journalist can write whatever they want about Trump, be it true or false, in, in America. And there are mechanisms in place that deal with that uh, without necessarily anyone ending up in prison. There, there are penalties. Uh, in the UK, they've got um, a, a framework in place where if you print falsehoods, you are either fo forced to retract them in the same way that you gave them. Uh, and then there's a remedy through the courts. Whereas in countries such as our, our very own, uh, print false was against the government, they only have one mechanism for dealing with you. Be they, whatever they perceive as falsehoods, you know you're going to end up in jail. And that's not normal. Journalisms don't tend to end up in prison in, in most countries. They tend to either okay. be disgraced uh, by someone else or another journalist. Uh, Godfrey, it's midnight. We can't see you. We'll assume that you are dead. <laughs> but he's still around. Okay. So Wellington, uh, you are now part of this C to C. When you, yeah, how did you Hello. convince Keith? What did you tell Keith to be interested? <laughs> Wellington, how did you manage to convince Keith to end up here? Wellington. We can't hear. Confess, Wellington, it's good for the soul. Yeah. Uh, so what happened is that I did not hear anything that you said. There was a bad, <laughs> there was a bad connection. Oh, okay. I couldn't even hear okay. anything. But maybe I don't know. Uh, what uh, would you like to just quickly right. paraphrase? I'll say, so how that did I can you get, get kids to come out of the darkness and be here to be enlightened? I hope. Uh, uh, since he has not run away, he, he is confirming what you told him. What did you tell him? I don't think he's hearing. There seems to be a connection there. So now we turn to Keith. How did he tell you? And what did he right. tell you for you to end up here? Uh, I suppose a bit of background. Uh, myself and Wellington actually went to school together from Form 1 to Form 4. 
at, at which point we were a pair of inseparable two peas in a pot. Uh, so our our line of thinking is was kind of um, uh, percolated at Thornhill High School and beyond. Um, he reached out to me. We, we have a lot of connections that we do over over the last sort of twenty years. In fact, our entire adult life. Um, so he reached out to me, basically talking about a platform where you got the opportunity to put things across uh, in an environment where you, you can hear both sides, hopefully, um, without too much um, of the necessary gnashing of teeth that can happen in the, <laughs> on other platforms. Um, he says this is an opportunity for me. I've got, obviously, I've got a lot of ideas that I want to punch across, a lot of things that I am actually doing. Um, and he convinced me that on this platform, some of my ideas might find um, a choir for me to preach to. Uh, but also equally, I can also be part of the choir to, to hear ideas from people that might even enhance um, my worldview and help me to make a success of bits and pieces that I've said. I mean, you mentioned your name quite quite a lot as part of that. Um, and, uh, you know, I think so far from just the bit I've been listening to the last 30 minutes uh, and looking at the threads that are going through, there is a there is a, a plural a bit of plurality to what's happening here, and Mr. Motumo, you seem to be obviously allowing both sides to talk. But what's very clear is that I think we're all after one thing, which is the good to come out of all this. Have I, have I, so, have I got it about yeah. right, Willie? Okay, uh, yeah. that's what that's I uh, I think he is on mood. So thank you for taking time, giving up time to be here. The idea is that when we come together, those who have taken masks called professions must always be out there celebrating the profession they have taken yeah. and showing by their works how good yeah. they are. Unfortunately, there are people who are in the media who will leave it to Natasha to think about what good story it is instead of helping here to integrate what we are talking about. It's a big story, what you have said, uh, Keith, that we grew up together, we are buddies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ran away from Zimbabwe and left uh, Wellington to go to South Africa, but he came back to Zimbabwe. But uh, you are inseparable because yeah. your ideas can find expression on the same platform. So, if we were to celebrate the this member of the day, the member, the member of the day, it would be Wellington, who talks mm -hmm. about what he's doing with passion. Because there are some who appear here who say nothing, hear nothing, do nothing. Then they still come back and say, what is my next show? They would want to argue with you that what you are saying doesn't work when Wellington and Keith are one example of what we are talking about. And it's as old as Jesus Christ who said, if two or more gather in my name, they don't need me. You don't need Maweri. Because you can have the conversations that keep going to say, what time is it? If it's midnight, let me not be the reason for making it dark. Let me be that shining star so that what I do can influence others to stop tribalism. Because journalism is tribalism. Being a lawyer is tribalism. Being a doctor is tribalism. Because what is a doctor without sick people? What is a lawyer without people who need a lawyer who have no problems? What is a journalist without readers? Huh? Because I'm not employed employed by the, the client 
If the client tells me, Mawere, your show is useless, you know who will be embarrassed today? It will be Wellington. Mm. It will be Natasha. You say, ah, I work with these animals. I didn't expect that they were going to embarrass me. They're not supporting me. Just by showing up while she's on the show, just helping her, like what Senor Muzungu does. He's there every day. That passion, you can't pay for it. No, you can't. No. You can't buy it. The conversation is there. Trying to register his voice on things that are so important to him. And that's what we call a journalist. Not those who say, I got certificates on my wall. I'm waiting for people to make me back, to do that which I love to do. Mm. So it means your presence here confirms something that you have an interest. And we need to be able to build a community. So when we write a story, it is a story written by you out of this conversation. It will be your yeah. own story. Mm -hmm. And then we find a highway where each one of us has a lane. And we are going different directions. But we share a common highway that we can use to get where we want to get to. I could be a journalist just by being diligent. Tapping on other people's networks to share my insight than contain it in a WhatsApp group where that is bottled in. And you have written some, but some, someone called me this morning, says I benefited, I've instructed my, my employees to listen and watch your shows. You are just telling me to say, while you are doing whatever you are doing, you may not know that you inspire even my employees to start dealing with issues in a structured way. So they tell me, whenever you are on, that you are on. But they have an interest. So, Innocent, what is it that we can do to make that group live up to its promise. Because clearly you can see that the more we share, the, mm. the less we actually know what's going on. Mm, I, I think we, we need to continue encouraging them. And uh, we introduce, like what you have done, this, this is a good show. But, you know, some might not be aware of these opportunities. So I think we need to, besides writing in the WhatsApp groups, we need to share uh, these kind of platforms to the journalists. Then they see that these uh, opportunities are there. Then they can begin to speak to a wider audience. So now I give you the opportunity to talk to the world about your own experience. Uh, uh, innocent. Uh, okay. From uh, the day that uh, I provoked you, oh, you, you, you got in touch with me first, is that correct? Yes, I think so. Yeah, and I think so, but that was after I shared the threads. And so after I shared the thread, and you were provoked to say, I want to be in that group. Yes. Then Although... I ended you. In... Mm. And so far, yeah. have you made friends? Have you made friends in that group? Yeah, I've made lots of friends. I've got several acquaintances there. Yeah, it, 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 there, there's been connections. Okay, has it been beneficial to you? 
or disruptive to you? Uh, just that I'm a, 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 a patient guy. I'm kind of a person that accommodates diversity. I've got a lot of sons of humor. I'm, I'm not... I'm not really offended by people's having different thinking. But uh, I, I don't think that overall the group has achieved its objective. Like I said earlier, that it has just become like one of the common WhatsApp groups where, where people are just uh, in a battlefield and it's polarized. But here and there, you know, in a bin, you can pick the toy that you want. You don't need to check the entire bin, you know, you might pick the toy that you want, but I think there are great people there that share some good insights and some of those divergent views we just tolerate. But you, are you a journalist? I would say yes. <laughs> you know, they, there's this saying in the Bible that there are some who are who are eunuchs by birth and some who are made you, eunuchs what, by birth. What, what is your background? Uh, I would say, you know, my kind of journalism, it's, how would I define? I mean, I'm a political activist. I'm an activist as well. I'm a national spokesperson for some civic organization that is vocal in Zimbabwe. And so my journalism is, is on that. In the political no, field, I'm, is in the civic you, field you, as well. You, you as a person, mm -hmm. uh, when you came to the group, you have also distinguished yourself by generously giving your opinion. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like to do that. I have that passion. But what motivates you to take the step forward and just uh, I, I say it? Come again. What inspires you? Without anyone asking you, uh, to be it's just that on each well, other. I, I, I think I, I, you know, this your philosophy that uh, you don't believe in leadership, but you believe in equation. So the moment I see that, I can, I have to influence others. I can't wait for people to be self-influenced. So it's just natural motivation to say, if I am to be in a better country, I think I should just give the little that I have. And uh, how do you know, maybe out of 10, someone might pick two or three uh, valuable issues. And I think that, that, that will edify someone. That's what motivates me, just trying so to influence if, other people. If, if we were to start a school of journalism, because we have some... Mm -hmm members of this community who have courses in journalism and they said mm -hmm. if we were to offer a course in journalism who would you want to be in the faculty uh i wouldn't want these old dogs because we can't teach them new tricks i would want the people that have the attitude to learn I think we'll achieve better with that kind of people. We can identify some so people. Would, I think that is you, also part of my strengths. Would you I, want I, to be one of the persons to say for the continent, let's change the way we think about the role of the media by doing something, by training new people to come to the profession. Those who are in the profession to unlearn, relearn, and perhaps learn how to report on event without being part of the event. Yeah, that that will be a good thing. I think that will be a good thing because right, so really our journalism is it's not where it's supposed to be. It's not going to change because you 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 complain about it. So we can go deeper, like uh, Keith uh, uh, said. Uh, Keith may be in the UK, but he can't determine the content of what is shared. But surely we can sit back and say, okay, uh, uh, Natasha, you wrote something, and uh, you find some people just say to you, Natasha, interesting. 
Have you ever heard that word? Mm. <laughs> yes, I have, yes. And they say nothing. They just put a full stop. Then you say, what mm. is interesting? They say, you figure out. They never comment. They never challenge you. Because when people challenge you, then you become better. Mm. Would you want a friend who yeah. says you are A plus, but meanwhile they say you are D or E? No, because you know, in 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 you know, in our lives, uh, go. If that's a, you know, your friends and your family. I think is a wrong audience because you know they will always say it's good. But actually, it's never good, or you know, they don't show you any improvement. You know, your your family and friends are—it's definitely the wrong audience. But obviously, I wouldn't believe if my friend says to me it's an A plus no, article because I'll be like, you know, surely yeah, I believe there, there's some improvement. If you look at it, uh, would you want people who are close to you who tell you what you want to hear? No. Because that's gonna never gonna make me a better person. It's gonna let me stay in the exact same spot I am, and I'm gonna think I'm, I'm the greatest. But actually, when people read my articles, I'll be like, oh, "What is this woman going right. on about?" But she how many presidents employ people to tell them what they already know? Oh, I think everyone does that's it that's because why. it makes them feel better. Just straight yeah, helps the super ego. Yeah. Yeah, would you mm. want to be a president? Uh, is that to me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. But let me throw a challenge to my brother on the other side who was saying he's an activist and a journalist. Is it possible? Yeah, no. You are, yeah. you are talking. Okay, okay. My brother said something, and he is saying he is a patient man, and uh, he takes um, ideas from the other side of of the mm -hmm. coin. But uh, just now, I picked something that um, I feel he has a sentimental attachment to a system in in the country. He is saying you cannot teach old dogs uh, new tricks, meaning. He has a class of people that he can share what he needs to share, which to me uh, may not go down very well because a community has everyone. And that's the young, a part, uh, uh, innocent, uh, what do you have to say? That uh, uh, in expression, you actually are a tribalist. But uh, perhaps when you do right, you may be persuaded. What we are saying, old dogs, how do you come to the conclusion that a dog that is old does not bite? I didn't say it doesn't bite. It actually, it continues to bite, but uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a partisan bite. I, I, I no, used that how metaphorically. That how do you come to that I, conclusion? I, I, you don't, the dog coming before you as a judge. And it gives uh, I mean, I mean, I've learned to be mellow. I've learned to be quiet. It doesn't mean I'm not. Uh, I'm not angry, but I'm a different dog. But not all dogs can be treated the same. Not yeah, all white people can be. I, I was. I, I was not white. I was simply trying to express metaphorically that so there thinking, are some so that there are some people who have now a habit they can't change no matter how you try because of the no, years but what did of, you know, were you given 40, 24 hours in a day to change other people to live your own life uh, no, no people should be changed because some happy to be where you get the time to, to know which is a good dog, which is a bad dog, which is a, a an old dog, instead of you Standard. just being your dog. That's what that's what Laxon is saying. That I've learned from this community that let's treat each other equally. 
Let me not be the judge unless I'm presiding over a dispute of dogs. No, he's, he's quite to... right in saying he's quite right in saying we shouldn't judge. They I agree with him, but you cannot call an elephant a lion. I mean that would be that would be no, unfair. You cannot leopard, call a, a, a leopard a, a, a sheep. Innocent, what you say, but you you are saying I don't agree. Let's finish the first one. Should you be a judge in the affairs of dogs? I should be able to identify to say this is a lion, this is uh, no, no. a leopard. Should this you is be judge cheat. or occupied with judgment? No, I am and not interested in judgment. But yeah. the, okay, Kit, uh, Kit, uh, can, uh, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I was, go. Oh. You are giving me a chance, or okay, you yeah, take it. Let ahead. me finish. Yeah, you know, you know what, uh, innocent. The, uh, mm -hmm. This platform, I think, where we are coming from, or from what I learned, we are trying to say, um, when you see a tree, you haven't seen a forest. And when you see old people who don't think properly, it's not all old people who don't think properly. There is a yes, proverb which says, there is a proverb which says, we should, when you, when you say that you are putting a, a boundary that we don't go to old people, but for us to have, a, for you to get more wisdom, you should be more, close to more of the old people we have experienced much in life so now when you put a boundary how would they impart their wisdom to you or to us uh maybe you okay. took me out of context i didn't mean to say old people are not beneficial uh, are not gonna benefit us anything i didn't mean it okay. that way i i mm -hmm. i simply meant in okay. the confines of journalism that if we are to have impactful journalism, yeah. then we, we, we as the old people, we should impart no, it on the, on the young Innocent. people. If you have learned something, mm. just stop there and let's move on than to argue again on the same point you have considered to. So it's wrong. I, 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 got, I got his point. I think he's, he's actually correct he, in that we yeah. don't have to, yeah. to, to categorize so, people. So I yeah. explained it to him that I, I didn't mean it literally have, blocking old people. You don't even have to explain because he heard you correctly. That's why you are trying to okay. wiggle out. How many of us trying to wiggle out from things that we have said? <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 but I, I thank him for his uh, clarity because it actually makes the point clear. I agree with him. We, we don't have to uh, categorize uh, no, people. I Everyone do, can I learn. Do, I don't, yeah, if you don't categorize others who follow you, who emulate you, but if mm. you are the champion of, of labeling people, then you can't blame presidents for labeling people enemies. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanted to say something. Yeah. yeah uh, for for me, it's it's it speaks to a wider problem that we have. Uh, since we're we're this part of this is we're talking about identity. Uh, it speaks to a wider wider issue that we have, and how easy how easy it is for expediency or other reasons. We 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 simply throw things like um, madalas, the old yeah. guy, the youth. Uh, I mean, the term youth is being abused in Zimbabwe to a, to a large extent. I mean, I've seen some folks who have been described as youths, uh, dubious at best, as part of that description. Um, so but there does you know, need you know, to be... Uh, kids, you know how many of them are Christians? How many are Christians? Who talk about the youth? You know, Jesus, uh, Jesus, Jesus, was he a youth? Or he was Jesus? <laughs> This, this, this is the issue now. You, you need you need to think about. Uh, I suppose people don't don't look at it in the same way. Um, being in, in the UK, you're exposed to different cultures and how they look at what is youthful and what is not youthful. Um, 
in some cultures, some of the guys that we work with, um, they're 35, they're staying at home, uh, and they're classed as a child. Uh, and yet in other cultures, they're 18, they're classed as an adult, they're expected to have their own house, to stand on their own two feet. Um, very, very different depending on where but you're there coming. Many, there are many young people who are foolish. There are many young people mm. who are smart. And what uh, Larkson was just saying is that, let me see the tree, not trees. Indeed. That, I think that's, that's what and I'm saying. Let me you. talk to Keith, mm -hmm. not to black people who, are, who have some funny hair. Yeah. <laughs> I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Um, yeah, and then call you. Uh, okay. Finally, before we <laughs> close, there's somebody who sent a comment here. I think uh, it was uh, 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 the fellow in Mozambique. Uh, hi, guys. There's some, uh, some comment that was made that uh, uh, can you please also interrogate the difference a journalist and an, between a, a, a journalist and an investigative journalist? What are the parameters of journalism in general and investigative journalism in particular? So always, if you are interested in being part of this uh, community or a class of 2020, the COVID-20, that is interested in learning about what is a journalist and what would make one rise above to become an investigative journalist and what kind of mask is that because we all wear masks someone wear the mask of journalism to pretend to be one and some approach the world with no mask at all so how many of us hide behind certificates? And when reason fails, we become argumentative because we actually don't have anything to say other than this is what I qualified and you are not qualified. Why are investigating journalists targeted by government? I don't think that uh, no, anyone wakes up in the morning to target anyone. Because someone may say I'm investigative and another may say you are intrusive. To me, I am doing something the best way I know, but in an arrogant, obnoxious manner that I know already the answer. So I just want you to confirm what I know. And that's not journalism. If you know something, I think it's high time you acquired an external mic for your computer for quality audio. And uh, Ms. Yaki, Ms. Yaki is saying uh, that's, a, that's an instruction to a dog uh, to wear a mask. Uh, somebody is with uh, I think there's somebody with, uh, with uh, a double. Hello? Yeah. So, uh, Ms. Ms. Tiaka, uh, it's a good suggestion. I take it. Uh, but that's why we're saying let's build a community so that we can have microphones. We can pay 500 rand each per year so that we have microphones for those who broadcast. I'm just here as a provocateur, not as a journalist. And I am not doing it to be heard. No. I'm just doing it to show up. And when you show up, if you have seen me, that's enough that I am as angry as, uh, in, uh, as innocent is, as Luxon is, that what is taking place in our WhatsApp groups can be more structured, more orderly, so that our thinking is shaped and defined by what we do. We'll lessen the arguments and lessen the attacks that are unnecessary. Then we can live up to the promise of what happened today. That uh, 
uh, innocent was just talking as he has been talking before that all dogs must be left out of the dining room. They must not eat. He must invite young dogs so that the young dogs become the voice of what he wants to hear. So that's uh, innocent. But as a result of this show, I guess Innocent can sum up what he has learned so that we put it in the newsletter. And just uh, that, uh, what did you learn from this show? And then we can uh, close. Let me tape that and get a transcript of that so that you don't have to repeat it so that uh, we are just uh, 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 trying to get the voices. It's your turn. It's your turn, uh, uh, Innocent. Uh, innocent, we can't hear you. Uh, you are on mute. All right, uh, go ahead. Okay, I think uh, in that uh, the, that brother there, wh what he did say actually helped me because I picked what he was trying to emphasize on, and I think it was very edifying. So you see that you can have your own idea, you can have your own perception on something, but when you have that attitude to listen, you you will be bettered. Like what my sister, uh, who is who is more who is more color than no, me, she, there. She, no, she she's she said that. Her uh, you know? name is Nat Natasha Dikoka. From <laughs> now onwards, don't say my sister okay. is a way of hiding behind okay. ignorance. Okay, my my sister Natasha. There, she did say that if some people are not going to change you, then you are around the wrong people. So, you know, that brother there, to some, his name is Lakso say, ah, he's trying to his name, is, his name is Lakson, okay. not brother. Bra no, no, he's called okay, Lakson. Brother Lakson there. Brother Lakson, okay. yeah. He, he actually listened. He, 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 he is able to listen to me and I, I expressed myself in a way that I thought was right, but because I listened to him too, so I'm changed, you know, I'm better, I'm improved actually. So I think this is what uh, benefits us when we interact and we listen to each other and we're not polemic about our ideas. We'll improve our society because henceforth you would find that my expressions are part of Natasha, a part of uh, Laxon. That's right. And uh, Laxon, you'll find our way. Just hold on. Just, just a second. Okay. okay, you can go ahead. It's Laxon Stain. He's on mute. Huh? Laxon? Say so you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, I, I got something from him, which is very nice. That um, um, you see, people come or we appear in the society with our own uh, understanding, and we we certify what we know as the truth, and nothing more. Which, if someone uh, examines it, it, sees it differently. So this is now where um, we have a problem of not meeting. And with this uh, such a platform, it makes us to meet. I show my side, which I had certified, but someone interrogates it, finds it to be uh, not right. So I'm saying it's important that we share more to educate our people, uh, or to educate our society, to to take ideas, buying ideas. That is my, when I speak to Natasha, I buy an idea. I speak to Mr. Mawere, I buy an idea, I become better. Thank you. And uh, uh, Keith? Uh, Keith? Yeah, I think, ah, okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Right, I, I, 
for me, conclusion wise, it's been a quite a, a, a life affirming experience in many ways. Uh, the one thing I'm glad about the show is that it's, it's not an echo chamber because sometimes on social media we get stuck in these echo chambers where we we literally coalesce around people who think exactly like we do, who have exactly the same life view. What I just witnessed today is um, a fair exchange of view, what is actually called a proper discourse. Um, and as we can see, we're still together. No one has left. No one has used expletives. <laughs> but we've 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 um, we've reached a point, a point of learning for for both sides. Um, and me, as a, someone on the side, I've also learned um uh from what Luxon kind of uh, fed back that there, there are some instances where we need to be very careful about the lexicon uh, that's scripting in terms of the language we use to describe people or groups or whatever um um we talked about journalists and identity like i said i'm a registered mental health nurse um and identity is something we deal with a lot as people develop illnesses their identity completely changes so i understand its fluidity um I hope we can conclude from the show that you you are indeed allowed to be uh, a journalist, uh, a golfer, a, 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 a husband, a wife, a citizen, um, without any of those roles being said. Oh, whoa, whoa. how can you be a journalist and a, and, a, and a polygamist? How can you be a journalist and a Muslim without any of that? That we accept the plur plurality that is the human condition. Um, I hope I hope that's that's certainly what's coming across from my side. I hope people who are listening somewhere else can appreciate that, um, but also appreciate that a river. You know, this is one of those things that flows both ways. By you being a journalist uh, and not really liking a certain party, it'll color your journalism, and we have to accept that. Um, it may be if we're into labeling people, we can say I'm a journalist, but I'm also an anti abortion um person be clear in your in your how you describe yourself uh, and that way when people hear what you have to say they know the prism by which you view the world there may be the way to go but without necessarily meaning we'll punish you because your prism is the wrong color or whatever but i'm glad to for the experience from my side thank you okay thank you and then uh... Let's uh, let's get to Mr. Mutindi. Are you there? Uh, he has been missing in action. Uh, Godfrey, are you there? Uh, Godfrey, are you there? Uh, Godfrey is not speaking. All right, uh, let's go to <coughs> Natasha. Uh, Godfrey, um, right? uh, good morning, good morning, comrade. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, Godfrey is there. Yeah. Go ahead. The network is very bad. All right. Uh, so, did you pick up anything that you want to share as a parting uh, words? Yeah, I, 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 I picked some things. Uh, the critical thing which I picked was the the debate on who is a journalist or what is a journalist and the the contentious issues on the pedigree of a journalist <clears throat> who can we say is a good journalist uh, and i was glad that uh, the, 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 the 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 it's difficult to come up with um, with an example of a journalist because we, we, we find out that uh, the media, instead of it being a social service to the people, it's commercialized. The, the, the news is commercialized such that uh, each house, each media house spins news in its own direction. It's either the public sector, we find sometimes in some of the countries it's pushed by the state. They want a certain narrative to be to be is to be sent to the people and the private sector wants a certain narrative they want to sell products they want to send out an alternative such that in between these extremes sometimes it's very difficult for the people to know which is the truth what is or even the simple thing like what has happened 
like right now i was i was i think some of you have seen uh, a news item of a mdc activist who was murdered last night supposedly murdered in urungwe some have already written that it's chinamasa who has sent people uh, it's an pf which has killed i don't know the investigation has not taken place if the police goes some people will say the police is part of the system the court saying no this they will say the court is part of the system so in this type of contention in this type of polarization the truth is the first victim like like what is said usually it's difficult to know what has happened because political overtones are bigger than the story itself yeah thank you that's uh that's uh that's indeed the 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 world we live in now and uh, how to change it becomes the challenge yeah. uh now natasha your final words thanks thanks for having me on the show um you know these platforms like the c2c and like we found today it is a place place where we can Hello. 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 Okay, uh, Natasha's network is gone. So I guess that comes we come to the end of the show and uh, thank you very much for being part of it. Hopefully the wider public has learned and uh, when we learn, we can do things differently. We can think differently. And also we can act differently. It is important that we all learn. And when we learn, we learn from those who have had different experiences, not superior experiences because life allows us to live it in the present tense. Nobody lives before they actually live. So we are here as one. Show up, be the voice, even if you were to have time to summarize what was discussed here and produce a tweet, produce a text, just to say, I was there. And the video will become the longer version of your own experience. How many of us want to be known, yet we don't want to be known? We don't show up, yet by showing up, it means you become more attractive. If it's your voice that is organized, they will see us as five people not angry at each other. Some people will learn to be less angry at dissenting voices. Even rebellion of ideas will not qualify me to be called less than a human being. But how many of us disagree? And when we disagree, what follows is unhealthy. It's animal-like when all we could do is to disagree without being disagreeable. So when we talk about the media, it's not the media we are talking about. It's not the journalists we are talking about. It's just the storytelling. That when I tell a story, if I was in the scene of accident, then I was not there. Let me not be the one that comes in. Let me be the one that talks about what I know and what I don't know, I don't know. Huh? And then I leave it there. That what I don't know, I leave it for others. Is that Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah. 
Okay, That's thank you very much. All right, thank you.